Interwoven vines made up what looked like a drive belt. The contraption consisted of a crude wooden wheel with wooden slats. That vine rope could be useful. A wooden box was connected to the nearby water wheel. The water wheel had been built to provide a natural source of power. The wheel had a rim of roughly beaten iron. Two round stones were carefully balanced on a wooden structure. The vine provided a drive belt to connect the two stones. It was heavy. I guess that was intentional. Now I had the contraption working. It was a pile of damp leaves. It was a pile of damp leaves. I placed the newspaper clipping over the damp leaves. It was the flint statue of Tom. As I held the fetish to the iron rim of the wheel, a shower of sparks cascaded onto the leaves. Quick man, put out that pyre. I got a sick woman up here. Sorry, father, but I needed to attract your attention. My name is Stobart, George Stobart. I'm Father Hubert. I don't suppose you speak French. Huh? Why do you want to know that? I found a young woman with a fever on the river this morning. The poor girl is close to death. And there's nothing I can do for her but pretend. I don't understand her. But I think she's speaking French. Hang on. That must be Nico. What are you doing out here in the jungle? God's work. Not quite the destination I had in mind when I set out, but well, you know what they say, mysterious ways and so on. You didn't plan to end up here? No. I was on my way to the miners camp in the north. I was stuck here when my boat capsized on the river. That's exactly what happened to me. How long have you been here? Eleven years. 
That's my girlfriend you've got in your treehouse. What's the matter with her? She's been bitten by a venomous river snake. But can't you do something for her? There's a cure, isn't there? I ran out of penicillin and morphine years ago. But the local people speak of a root which they believe will counteract the poison. Where can I find this root? I don't know. But maybe the shaman at the village can tell us. Will you show me the way to the village? Me? Oh, but... I can't. Can't? Nico's life depends on it. You're right. Of course, I should, despite my own guilt and shame. But I can't go as a representative of God with a priest collar. A creased collar? You mean you put your personal attire higher than the life of a sick woman? I will not go to that village looking anything but my best. Give me your collar. I'm sure I can find a way to press it. Thank you, my son. In the meantime, I must contemplate my sermon. There was obviously more than a creased collar bothering the priest. So there I was, hundreds of miles from civilization, doing the housework for a priest. It's a strange world. The press worked surprisingly well on the collar. Here's your collar, Father. Thank you, George. You'd probably think it a little odd of me to make such a fuss. Oh, no. If I'd been living in the jungle for 11 years, I'd be completely screwy, too. Screwy? Yes, perhaps I am. Ever since my last visit to that village. Do you want to tell me what happened at the village? I forgot my vows. I let myself be overwhelmed by the beauty of this unspoiled paradise. And in a moment of weakness, animal passion really complicated. You know, you should be writing romantic novels. Did you experience some kind of a physical liaison at the village? Yes, I'm ashamed to admit it, but I found myself doing the monkey dance. I've never heard it called that before. And I didn't want to pry any deeper into Hubert's murky past. Now you've got your collar back, will you take me to the village? I still not finished my sermon. Look, Father, I still don't know why you're so reluctant to visit that village, and it's none of my business. Whatever the reason, it can't be more important than saving Nico's life. You're right. I must be crazy. We must make haste if we're to reach the village before nightfall. By the time we reached the village, it was sunset. Hello, boys. Glad to see you're still wearing the underpants, what? <laughs> They're the best Christmas present we ever had, Father. Mine are too tight. Well, we all have our cross to bear. Uh, this is George. He has a request to make. I'm afraid I can't stay. Good luck, George. That's a relief. I never feel comfortable with him about. Me neither. These damn pants keep riding right up my butt. So, what do you want? My girlfriend has been bitten by a snake. So? Everyone in my family has been bitten by snakes. I was bitten by a dormouse once. She's real sick. I hoped your wise man might have medicine. Wise man? You must have the wrong village. Father Hubert said there was a wise man in the village who could help me. Ooh, he must mean the old man, the shaman. Are you going to stand by and let my girlfriend die? Of course not. What do you think we are, savages? We'll start the preparations for a cremation feast. 
I'd like to see the shaman, please. You can't just go walking in there and demand to speak to the shaman. Why not? You have to observe the protocol. The shaman demands tribute. Tribute? You mean, like a gift? That's right. The eternal question. What do you give a man who has everything? Give me a clue. What kind of things does your shaman like? Does he have a hobby, a favorite sport? You insult us. The shaman lives on a higher plane. Oh, right. Maybe a book would be more suitable. Or a jigsaw puzzle? Don't you just hate choosing presents for people you don't know? Here, he'll like these biscuits. If you say so. He liked the biscuits, especially the black ones. He wants to know if you've any more. It was the black obsidian stone which had been sent to Nico. One side bore a grotesque image of a dog's head. The other was blank. I put the Mayan stone in the empty box. Here, I found some more of those biscuits for the shaman. I'll give them to him. The shaman wants to talk to you. I hoped he would. Well, it's been nice to talk to you guys. The guards looked as fierce as anyone can, wearing only their underpants. That woman certainly wasn't the reason I'd come to the village. It was a basket full of rocks. The old guy was obviously the shaman of these people. Hi, my name's George Stobart. Please, sit down. Welcome, George. Thanks. It has long been foretold that a white man would bring the coyote stone to this village. My girlfriend's been bitten by a snake. And you want me to heal her? That's the idea. Can you do it? I'm not sure. My gums aren't what they used to be. Listen, my girlfriend's in a coma. Please, old man, give me the root. What root? Why is Father Hubert so reluctant to visit the village? I don't know. He used to come here a lot, but then he just stopped. You think he wants to spend some time with his kids? Did you say Father Hubert has kids? Three girls and five boys, by my reckoning, all conceived in the same week at the Feast of the Monkey Dance. Father Hubert told me of a root which could cure the bite of the river snake. Tough. There's nothing sacred with these people. That was a secret, known only to members of my tribe. If that root is my chance of saving Nico's life, then I want it. Fast. There is time yet, George Stobart. Time to learn why you were called here. Fine. If I listen to your story, then will you give me the route? The eel travels far, but still returns to the place of his spawning. And look, I'm running a tight schedule, so can you skip the riddles? Many years ago, when the world was young, Great God and King Quetzalcoatl was defeated by trickery and deceit. His enemy Tezcatlipoca took his place as leader and demanded terrible human sacrifices. 
group of loyal priests found a way to trap Tezcatlipoca. But his powers were so great, they knew he would not remain trapped forever. His time of incarceration would end with the eclipse, which marked the close of the fifth age. So the priests fashioned three obsidian stones which contained the power to seal the mirror for all time. But before the stones could be put in place, they were seized by the invading Spanish. But how did they trap Tez, the evil god? They built a pyramid which they told Tezcatlipoca was dedicated to him. At its center, they fashioned a huge mirror of perfectly smooth obsidian. Luring him into the pyramid with praise and flattery, they used sorcery to ensnare him in the mirror. There's an eclipse of the sun due very soon, isn't there? Correct. The eclipse which marks the ending of the fifth age will come before the next full moon. Less than two weeks. I didn't really believe that Tez Catlipoca would return, but I figured Karzak's plans were in some way connected. What happened to the stones? They were taken by the Spanish to the coastal town that is now called Guaramante City. Only one stone reached Spain. The other two fell into the hands of buccaneers. The Jaguar stone was captured by an English captain, El Draco. The Eagle stone was taken by a pirate called Ketch. The third stone, the Coyote stone, reached Spain safely. That is the stone in your possession. Tell me more about the Jaguar stone. Many centuries ago, the port of Guaramonte was entered by a ship flying Spanish colors. The captain, the man known as El Draco, sent soldiers ashore. Only when the soldiers arrested the mayor did the people realize that they were English privateers. The mayor was held hostage while the soldiers looted and plundered the city. Amongst the treasures they stole was the Jaguar Stone. Where is the Jaguar Stone now? I suppose El Draco took it back to his homeland, across the Great Sea, to England. Tell me more about the Eagle Stone. The stone was loaded onto a galleon with many valuable artifacts plundered by the Spanish. But shortly after leaving harbor, a terrible squall blew up and damaged the ship. The ship was intercepted by a bloodthirsty pirate, Captain Ketch. Ketch made short work of overpowering the crew, stealing the treasure, and sinking the Spanish ship. Where's the Eagle Stone now? Nobody knows for sure. Ketch retired from piracy and bought an island in the Caribbean. What do I do when I find the stones? Bring them here to me and I shall prepare you. The stones must be taken to the heart of the pyramid. Only there can they be used to seal the gate by which Tezcatlipoca will return to this world. Now do I get the root? Here, take it. Make haste if you wish to save the girl's life. The hummingbird seems to me of death to come. Now you're talking in riddles again. Listen, is it okay if I crash here? I've got no chance of finding my way through the jungle in the dark. You're welcome, but you probably won't get much sleep. Tonight's the night of the monkey dance. I left the village at dawn and stumbled back through the jungle in a post-party daze. It was just like sneaking back to my parents' house when I was younger. Hey, except Oakland didn't have monkeys or parrots. I'd always wanted a treehouse like that when I was a kid. As the 
liquid was squeezed from the root, it collected in the cone. Drink this. Oh, George, it's horrible. Just swallow it down. Okay, try and rest now, darling. You'll need all your strength when we go after the other two stones. Other stones? What other stones? What have you gotten me into now, Josh Tobat? The patient is sounding more like her old self already. Nico recovered quickly from her fever. To save time, we decided to split up and look for each stone independently. I traced the pirate catch to a remote island in the Caribbean with the fortune he'd amassed from piracy. He'd retired to a place that was later called Ketch's Landing. The guy was studying a large document. I just had to sneak a look at those plans. Hey, get out of there. You know, wherever I go, I hear those words. Paris, Syria, Ireland, or Spain. Makes no difference. What do you think you're doing? I was trying to show some interest in your project. Hi, is this Ketch's Landing? Yeah, that's right. My name's George Stobart. You're a surveyor, right, Mr. Bronson? And of course I'm a surveyor. Why the hell else would I have a theodolite? Well, I don't know. Abby, maybe? Yeah, right. What brings you here, anyway? I'm searching for an ancient Mayan artifact. What is it? Some kind of jewel? No, it's obsidian. A black stone with supposedly mystic powers. You're nuts. Catch you later, Bronson. I recognized the instrument as a theodolite, but I had no idea how to operate it. Eleven or twelve, he was fishing with the intense concentration of someone who had all the time in the world. You want to buy some fish? Nah, I don't like fish. What's your name? Rio. It means river. What about you? George. It means, uh, well, it, it's just a name. Is it true that Captain Ketch lived around here? That's right. That's his house up on the hill. It's a museum now. Yeah? That's exactly what I need. Thanks, kid. You won't get inside, you know. The old ladies close it down. What do you know about Captain Ketch? Just what everybody knows around here. He was a pirate and get himself hung. 
No school today? No, sir. What about your education? I can fish, sail, and swim. I've been looking after myself since I was six, and I'm bilingual. Aren't you a little overqualified for a beach bum? Well, you know, there's a lot of competition. Who are these old ladies you mentioned? Miss Frost and Miss Mina Ketch. How come the old ladies closed the museum? It's Branson's doing. He have the plans for redeveloping the museum. They're going to regret it, you know. The man's a crook. Will you help me get those plans? I don't want to go nowhere near that man. He promised to draw me when he found the fish I left in his sleeping bag. Do you know anything about pirate treasure? Man, that's all stories. There's no such thing as a real pirate treasure. A cute little putty tat. Actually, no. It was a mangy old flea bag. It was busily torturing a red ball. Two old ladies were sitting outside the house, enjoying afternoon tea. It was an old house. It was a sturdy, extendable ladder. A large tree stood beside the house with a suggestive U formed by the branches. Hi, my name's George Stobart. Good afternoon, Mr. Stobart. Would you care for tea? No, thank you, ma'am. I don't like tea. Is that your cat? Yes, it is. It's Ruddles. Do you like cats, Mr. Stobart? I love them. They're so cute with their claws and their little puckered butts. Aren't they, though? Don't encourage him, Mina. Can you tell me anything about Captain Ketch? More than you can tell me about your great-great-great-great-grandfather, no doubt. You're his descendant? Certainly. Captain Ketch was born in Dorset, England, in the reign of King Henry VIII. His family were undistinguished farmers, but young Frederick Ketch decided to go to sea. We have plenty of seamen in our family, Mr. Stobart. Are you interested in history, Mr. Stobart? Yes, I am. You were telling me about Captain Ketch. Do go on. Oh, yes. He sailed under Hawkins. Jim Hawkins? John Hawkins, one of the great traders of the Elizabethan age. In 1568, Frederick Ketch was a young man serving aboard the Jesus, Hawkins' flagship. They sailed from England to Africa and across the wide Atlantic to these islands. Ketch was never to see the shores of England again. How come Ketch never made it home? Because the Spaniards sank the Jesus in an act of treachery. You said Hawkins' fleet traded between Africa and the Indies. What was it they were trading? Black men with no shirts. You have to understand, Mr. Stobart, that this was the 16th century. But that doesn't alter the fact that Hawkins and Ketch were slavers and pirates. Would it surprise you to learn that Hawkins was also a devoutly religious man? He transported slaves in a ship named after Jesus Christ. In my book, that makes him a hypocrite. What happened to Ketch? Was he killed? Oh, no. He got away and returned to this island, to this very house. The Frederick Ketch Memorial Museum. Is it true Frederick Ketch was a pirate? Frederick Ketch was emphatically not a pirate. They hanged him, you know, down there on the beach in front of his family. Didn't bother with the trial, just whipped him out from his breakfast table and hoisted him up in chains. Well, if he wasn't a pirate, what did they hang him for? Envy. Pure, green-eyed envy. He had been a successful privateer, you see, and had accumulated great wealth. As rich as a mink in a paddock. Shut up, Mina. Yes, Frost. The small-minded governor and his lackeys wanted his money, trumped up some ridiculous charge about breaking the conditions of his letter of mark, and hanged him like a common thief. The blackguards! 
Letter of Mark? The document that permitted him to engage and destroy the enemies of the crown. The difference between a lawful privateer and a pirate. yoo Sorry, Frost. Well, why didn't Ketch just say, take a hike, guys, I've got a pirating license? Frederick Ketch was not a pirate! But he did show them his letter of mark. But they destroyed it and hanged him anyway. I've been talking to Rio, the little fisher boy. I'll thank you not to mention that little wretch in my presence. Dirty little whelk, nasty fishy boy. That will do, Mina. I gather you don't have much time for the little boy. That child is a delinquent, Mr. Stobart. Yeah, well, he's only, what, eleven, maybe? A knave with one hand on the tops. What is it about Rio that you don't like, Miss Frost? Well, once upon a time, he and Emily... Be quiet this instant, Mina! What can you tell me about Emily? Emily? What business can she be of yours? Her parents were killed in a typhoon. We, as her only living relatives, took it upon ourselves to raise the child. That's good to know Charity isn't dead. Oh, but she is. Washed overboard in the typhoon. Mr. Strobart wasn't talking about Emily's mother. He was being sarcastic. What else can you tell me about Emily? How dare you pry into our family in this way? I refuse to answer any more of your impertinent questions. about your friend Emily. Why are you so interested in Emily Ketch? Emily Ketch? A descendant of Captain Ketch the pirate? Yeah. What well, doesn't bother you? Why should it? We don't responsible for our ancestors. was the old house. It was locked. The house is closed. How come? It is undergoing refurbishment. Refurbishment? Where are the workmen? Preparation is half the work, young man. The intention is to prepare the museum for the new century. The Frederick Ketch Memorial Museum. It would look nice in neon. A museum for a pirate? There was a stony silence. As I have already told you, sir, you are not a pirate. It's precisely the sort of vile misrepresentation that Mr. Bronson is seeking to rebalance. Oh? How? Mr. Bronson has kindly agreed to undertake the museum's refurbishment at a very reasonable price. He understands the importance of a sense of history. Funny. That's not the impression I got of Bronson at all. He also understands spherical geometry. Mina. Well, he does. Listen, ma'am. I came a long way to visit this place. If we make an exception in your case, everyone will want to get in. Pardon me, but I didn't exactly have to fight my way through the crowds. You're the second visitor we've had today. No, I'm sorry, but it's impossible. The ladder extended easily. You there? What are you doing? Pardon me, ladies. I was just going to climb your ladder. I'm helping Bronson. Oh, you're not like him, are you? He's very polite, isn't he, Frost? And he has dimples when he smiles.
You're really fond of that cat, aren't you? He is our companion and our solace. I thought about catnapping the little monster until they let me in, but it wasn't my style. Maybe there was some other way I could use their affection for the cat to get me into the house. Okay, it was time for diversionary tactics. I thought I saw a little girl down on the beach. You must be mistaken. He must be mistaken. Mustn't he, Frost? I'm sure I'm not. A little girl and that young fisher boy. What? It's not possible. Uh, what were they doing? Oh, the kinds of things that all little boys and girls get up to at their age. When I was a little girl, we used to play cows and milkmaids. Well betide you if you're lying to us, Mr. Stobart. Heaven help you. With a creak of ancient corsetry, the sisters sailed majestically over the distant horizon. How come the old ladies closed the museum? It's Bronson's doing. He must the plans for redeveloping the museum. Oh, I know all about Mr. Bronson's plans. Can you let me have a fish, kid? I thought you say you don't like fish. It's not for me. It's a present. For the old ladies? Well, it makes a change from flowers and candy. No, it's for their cat. Okay. What do I get out of it? I can pay you. I've got Quaramontian dollars, French francs, and traveler's checks. You must be joking. The nearest bank is three islands away. Is this worm worth a fish? Could be good bait. How did it die? I think it drowned in tequila. Just like my Uncle Gabriel. Yeah, I'll have that. Okay, I'll get you a fish. It might take a while though. Did you see the weird sisters come by here? Did I? They look madder than usual, so I hide until they gone by. Just as well. They thought you were playing with Emily. Boy, were they steamed. Emily? You madder than them. There was nothing else I wanted to ask the boy. No luck with the fish? No, man. They don't want bite. That's cause they know there's a storm brewing. Storm? Well, I don't think so. Hey! I got a bite! You have? It's a big one! A real big one! Reel him in real. Jeez, it must be a whale or something. Will I ever see? I still need a fish, Rio. Okay, make me try again. Maybe you better change your bait. The only serviceable part of the bicycle's wreck was a rubber inner tube. You just never know when you're gonna need stuff like that. There was nothing else on the bicycle wreck I could use. There's a fish, my man. I can't put it in my pocket while it's flapping about like that. No problem.
Hi, Puss. Want to play? Hey, cat. Watch where you're putting those claws. Okay, cat. You don't deserve this, but here's a little fish. The little monster ate the fish, but never strayed far from the ball. Dizzy fish, my man. I couldn't reach it. I couldn't reach it. Not such a good idea. That should get the old cat dancing. I just hoped it didn't give itself a cardiac. I put the ball in the catapult. Took aim. Yes! Okay, so it was a lucky shot, but I knocked the other one target clean off the end of the flagpole. What the hell's going on here? 
Hi, Bronson. Nice to see you, too. You again. Have you been screwing around with my theodolite target? Where is it? I had to climb out of the window to put that one on. Damn it, I'm gonna have to go through all that again. Not this time. The house is locked up and the sisters aren't here. Hell's teeth! I'll have to put the spare target on the other flagpole. A whole morning's work wasted. I'm gonna fix all this and then I'm gonna fix you, you hear? Yeah? Fine. I'll be waiting. What you doing, Bronson? Just hanging around? I'm gonna kill you for this, Stobart! Get me down from here! What, so you can kill me? Gee, you talked me out of it, Bronson. I felt a little guilty about leaving Bronson up there. But not much, obviously. Hey, get me down! What's the magic word? Please! Aw, oh, bad luck. I was thinking of Alakazam. I had no more to talk to him about. The marker was a bright, shiny thing. And I have a weakness for bright, shiny things. It wasn't going to be much use without the Theodolite, though. With Bronson out of the way, I could finally get a clear look at the plans. Engineers' drawings didn't mean much to me, but one thing was clear. These plans were for a five-story, 200-roomed, luxury, pirate-themed hotel. Another stain on the bedspread of paradise. He climbed up there of his own accord. Then help him, you stupid man! Quickly, before he falls! You know, hanging from flagpoles suits you. Get me down! Not until the old ladies have heard exactly what you had planned. I've got your plans, Bronson. I know about the hotel. So what? This is between me and the Daves. Those sweet old ladies trusted you. This isn't what they wanted. Oh, people like them don't know what they want. Instead of wasting their money on this mausoleum, I can turn it to profit. But you should have discussed it with them first. If I was to let you down, will you promise to come clean about your plan? Sure I will. And you'll come to a tasteful compromise with Miss Frost and Miss Mina? Taste? What's taste got to do with architecture? Oh, dear. You'll have to stay where you are until you see sense. You rat! Catch you later, Bronson. Here, Bronson's plans. This means nothing to me. She's not wearing her reading glasses. Ah, wait. Yes, I see now. I see it all too clearly. That man is planning to build a huge hotel. Bronson is a confidence trickster. Mina, we have been duped. I'm glad we didn't sign his contract. Oh, I hate tricksters, especially confident ones. Come, Mina. Persona non grata. Yes. Come in, Caleb. Kindly disentangle yourself from our flagpole and eject yourself from our property this very minute. Disentangle. Eject. 
Hey, cut that out, you crazy old bat! How dare you! Mina isn't crazy, she's just engagingly eccentric. Yeah, as a bedbug. Ouch! Lovely as this little vista is, I'd be really grateful if you could let me into the museum now. Certainly, young man. We are most grateful to you for exposing this scoundrel, Mina, the lock. Thanks, ladies. Stobart, be a pal. Get these harpies off me. Ooh! While George was basking in the sun-drenched Caribbean, I went to the It was a long shot, but I thought I'd start my search for the Jaguar Stone at the British Museum.